Good afternoon, everybody. It's 1.30, and uh, I'm walking the meeting for the council of aging, and <coughs> meeting for Thursday, March 10th. Uh, start with public session. I see no one here. I'd like to have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 11th meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. Second? Okay, does anybody have any questions or corrections or anything to say? Okay, all in favor as they read, aye. say aye. Aye. Okay, now Okay, we're going to welcome Parker Morocco. Thanks for being here. Newly appointed. Newly appointed. All right. So we're glad to have you. Thank you. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're a fun group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marlene actually does volunteer work here. Um, she helps a lot with special events. Yeah. everyone things are going well with media and marketing and I, I think they seem to be going well um, at this point as of today there were about 3450 seniors that received the um, e uh, the mail Con Street Chronicle the one in the mail 2016 or 20 page document and about 178 that received it via email I haven't counted, but new participants re recently and other participants who have received it by mail have said, you know, take me off the mailing list or, you know, take me off the email list, I'll just come in and get it or I'll just keep it online, because it is online, you know, mm -hmm. every issue is online, so the insert in the Gazette every other month is online as well as the, what I call the full, uh, or the more, in, not more informative, but multi-page, thank you, <laughs> multi-page. Uh, issue so the things seem to be going well. I just add one thing. So we also drop off the multi-paged paper to many many locations. There's probably like 50 or so about that. that. Yeah, um, about so that. it gets dropped off as well. Yeah. And during this time, this next round, we'll be dropping, adding uh, Look Park to that as well. That mm -hmm. you know during Look Park time, we drop off some there as well. Um, in the past few three or four months. What we started doing is, at the beginning of every month, I will email the participants that are in my senior center who have an email. I will email the monthly calendar, you know, that monthly mm -hmm. calendar that we have copies of. And I will highlight the non-recurring events, mm -hmm. you know, the special presentations or the special events. But I put the, e the uh, calendar there because it has those events plus everything else. So. And we've gotten a lot of feedback. People like it. Uh, more people like it than don't. And we've had a few people say, I love it, but I'm not there anymore, so take me off the list. You know, things like that. So that's helping us to kind of get my senior center up to date as well. And we also do a, a call, what we call a robocall, at the beginning of the month, or for any special things coming up, like the corned beef and cabbage luncheon. We did a call and an email saying, hey, you know, get your tickets, and we're having a luncheon and things. And people have been giving us feedback on the calls as well, saying, you know, that's a good idea. It helps them to know about things they may not, may not know about or remember things they may have forgotten about. And um, still working on ads for the Con Street Chronicle, getting a couple here and there. And we'll be on uh, Channel 22 on May the 4th, between 11 and 12 on Mass Appeal mm -hmm. regarding the 14th Annual Health and Safety Fair. Mm -hmm. We're going to be giving us a three or four minute segment um, on that. And so that will be good. I'm trying to get on the other stations as well, you know, Channel 40 and other stations as well for that. And I try best we can to get us out there on the TV mm -hmm. stations. And also uh, on the radio stations, um, WHMP, where I'm working with them to get something for publicity as well, and PSA, and, mm -hmm. and something about what senior centers are, 
you know, focusing mm -hmm. on what they are. And Jim, you and I have talked about that a little bit too. So, so those are some of the things that, that are in the works. And we have a new, another issue coming out in a couple of weeks. This is a multi-page issue. And we've changed our logo. I don't know if anyone has seen, noticed that, but we've changed our logo. And it's on the new paper, the newspaper as well. So, any questions? Thank yeah, you. You might just mention how we fund the paper. Okay. The paper is funded um, through ads and through donor directory. We do a donor directory drive once a year, usually around July, August time frame. So we uh, have that as our funding. And so ads are really helpful and uh, donor directory is really helpful. And other contributions, you know, some people will come and say, you know, put this story in Constantry Chronicle and things. So we just appreciate everyone's help in, in that and getting it out because without that funding, it's uh, a lot <coughs> of expense for postage and mailing and printing and everything else. So that helps a lot with, the, with our budget and expenses. And part of Joanne's salary is paid through the city as well as the, the revenue generated from the paper. Remember the fellow that taught us about uh, being on a council? City of Jim, yeah, oh, Emmett? Emmett, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was saying that one of our jobs was to actually push to get the people to sell the ads or buy the ads. Like when he said, you know, go to the same grocery store, go to the same place all the time, mention mm -hmm. it, you know, if you get an extra 25 bucks or 50 bucks. And, and I know that that's worked for us a couple of times. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it, uh, sports hardware especially. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned it to them and they go, oh yeah. You know, they don't see it anywhere else, so it's part of our job to, to okay. help you get right. that. And I think sometimes um, when you have the paper and show it to someone, they have a whole different impression of what the paper is. It's not like a little newsletter like many other um, COAs have. It's, you know, a real newspaper. Right. I mean, it gets out everywhere. Well, just about everywhere. And just a, a mini stat, I, I ran a report since the past year, January of 2015 through March through today, and there's probably some more out there that have to be entered, but in my senior center, we've had 524 people sign up for scan cards. I think there might be more green sheets out there as well. Always there were green sheets. Yeah. So there's at least 524 that have signed up since last January. Because, yeah, Linda's always got, you know, she keeps plugging at it. <laughs> but anything else? Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there any chance that you could, what's the difference between last year and the year before that and the year before? Is it a trend that is growing or is it a trend that is going down? It's growing. It's growing. Yeah, good. but we can get those statistics. We can do it by year. Yes. In my senior center, uh, what an asset it is to us yep. because we can see, you know, how often a person comes to the senior center or, you know, what is the age group for a particular program. Um, it just we can break down uh, information a lot. And actually, Heather and I are putting together for the um, Elms College students, uh, the nursing students who come in, a, a lot of statistics. So we'll make sure that you get a copy of that as well. Because I think it is pretty interesting, um, the numbers of uh, people who come in here. OK, we'll move on to finances and the FY16 and 17 budgets? Um, I don't have a sheet to give you for personal services in the OM. I don't have that available because we can't get into um, that as a report. Um, it hasn't varied. I mean, the money in our budget hasn't gone up. It's what we were appropriated. Um, and as I usually say, in May, June, we start transferring money from our revolving accounts to our personal services to pay back what we owe the city. So our budget is we get a city appropriation and then we have a number of revolving accounts and in those accounts is how we pay for a variety of items in the senior center as well as a, a large portion of our um, staff. So the, we have funds from the city that's appropriated like all city departments and then there's a dollar amount that we have to come up with uh, and I think this fiscal year, it was around 92,000. So, I, and um, I have a budget sheet 
So, I mean, that's really all I have to say about that slide 16. Yay! <laughs> um, Continue, Mike. <laughs> carry on. So, I'm going to pass around. Um, yep. <laughs> a budget for FY17. So, I, I did just have my budget meeting with the mayor and Susan Wright, finance director, um, on Tuesday. And I, I'll do not say anything until you all have a copy of this so I can go over it and we're all on the same page. Thank you. So this is our budget for FY17, and um, if you look where it says description, it lists all the staff, um, and then the name of that staff person. We do have vacancies, but they're still in our budget. Mm -hmm. um, what bargaining unit people are in, the number of hours that that person puts in each week, and a full-time employee is 35 hours. Um, full-time equivalency, that's the percentage of, um, you know, one is that it's a full-time, and then how it breaks down based on the number of hours a person's here. And then um, the FY16 budget, that's the portion that the city pays. And then if you move over, um, the um, department budget general fund, and when you see some lines going through, there's no number there. That's because we're paying for that entire position. We meaning whatever we come up with for revenue to pay that. And then when it says other source, that's the money that we come up with. So for FY17, we're coming up with 102,582. I think that's probably the highest amount that we've ever had to um, come up with. Um, <coughs> what doesn't get included in this budget because a lot of the union contracts are not signed uh, or not have not been negotiated mm -hmm. so it doesn't include um, any any of the uh, unions that are uh, in, in um, our personnel uh, the, we don't know what that sum is so that's not included in here so this covers 26 pay periods plus one day and so the um, underneath the personal services, you'll see the um, OM account, which is uh, operations and maintenance. So it's what we have from the city to pay for other things in the building, like our office supplies, recreational supplies, travel. Um, and so from the city, it's 10,264. So that's all included in our budget. So between personal services and the OM, all those uh, line items to sort of operate the senior center, it's 300,583. Um, and um, you know, with, with what we come up with to pay our portion, we do get the um, formula grant money from Executive Office of Elder Affairs and right now that is a little over 52,000. So that's kind of the halfway, you know, it's like, okay, now it's really only this much. But you know, if that grant ever went away, then we'd be um, mm -hmm. sort of really looking for more funds. Um, before I started, the um, formula grant money was used for other things besides personal services, but pretty much since I've been here, all that money, go, that grant money goes towards um, personnel mm -hmm. and um, and then everything else is paid through um, the revolving funds it could be you know we have the cost centers we have the coffee shop we have the gift shop we have food services we have rentals um, we have people who make donations we get memorial gifts so there's all these other ways fees from classes uh, is how our budget gets generated from our end so Sometimes it's um, hit or miss that you're hoping to get there. Um, and, and so far, I think we've been doing very well. I think we have dedicated volunteers and staff who um, you know, 
participate in a lot of the fundraising and what we need to do. And it is surprising something like, and I'll just use a mini sale table um, in the lobby that in one day we made over $75,000 and the books. And so that, that's like, I'm going to say, you know, um, it doesn't take a lot of effort to put that out there to earn yeah. income. Right. So between like the end of the year and that, I think we'll get a, a report of here's how much the book sale money brought in, here's how much the coffee shop brought in, the gift shop. So all of those, mm -hmm. all of those are ways that our budget gets um, supplemented. And those, some of those things aren't staff intensive, so it's a really right. win, a very big win for them. Right, so, you know, we used to do a tax sale and maybe we made $2,500, no, I'm sorry, no, no, we never made that much, maybe $1,500. Now you can really do that just by having that big sale table there. So. Mm -hmm. And our lobby is really big, so there's, you know, we try to keep it net nice and neat. Um, you know, people have complained about the books, and, you know, so what we've done is we have boxes that are all the same size, and they don't have printing all over them, just so that it does look better. Um, I, one of the things is, like, when we have the health and safety fair, for example, we need the lobby, all that stuff's got to get moved out, so it's a little more work. And I think, Marlene, once we had all the books out here in the hallway for our craft festival, um, because we needed that space for vendors so as you all know we're always moving furniture around <laughs> um, so this this budget is you know sort of in um, flux because you know there may be other things that happen to this budget one of the things that um, I've talked with the mayor about you know, we're going to have two new vans and what that means is that we need somebody to dispatch and we need van drivers so that isn't even reflected in this and um, I'm putting together a memo to the mayor, which I'll make sure you all get a copy of how to justify um, or to inform about the uh, need for transportation. Oh. So one of the things that I've been doing is calling other senior centers um, that have a population of seniors similar to ours and that the community is similar in size, um, uh, in addition to whoever I might have talked to um, prior about how they do transportation. So finding out some very interesting things about transportation. So also the, the colored graph, um, you can see a comparison of uh, you know, our budget, which if you look 2000, FY 2016 and 2017, it's pretty much stayed the same. But once we look at the transportation program um, and how that's gonna get funded is, <coughs> is being discussed. I think we've come a long way. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions for Patty on the budgets? And then we'll move on to the director's report. Last night, the Florence Bank was here doing their customer choice grant program and awarding uh, $100,000 to a variety of agencies and organizations. And um, this is what they hand out to everybody. So I'm gonna pass this around. Uh, in this, we actually didn't, they didn't write the right amount that we were receiving. It's actually more. And so we received um, $2,836. And this was their 14th year, and every single year we've um, received funding from this um, Customer Choice Award. So I think that's great. And I will say thank you to Barbara yeah. Hungarola. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because Barbara comes to most of our major events and sits there, and nobody gets fired without and horses. <laughs> horses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Barbara and Mike were both there last night um, to equally accept the check from John Heaps. Uh, and they also do a, a lot of picture taking and they use them in ads, so I'm sure you'll see us. Uh, and the check actually, because you have to be a 501c3, it goes through Elder Vision Inc., our friends group, and then the friends group writes a check to senior services and the money is going towards the transportation program. 
and actually right now any of the monies that we get um, oh, are going into transportation program because it's going to need some funding. Um, so you can also vote now um, for yes, two anybody thousand. who hasn't voted. Two oh, thousand is out there. Yeah. Okay. So these okay. votes were really um, an accumulation from 2015. So this year's 2000. 16, but in March of 2017, it's the award for 2016. Okay. So, Sign up now. No respite for you, huh? Yeah. yeah. And you have a, to have 50 votes in order to qualify. Do, do we have, we have that, like I voted, I, I signed up a little. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Someone yeah. out here? Yeah, there's a box yeah. out there. Do you have uh, it was a, a very nice event, and uh, we enjoyed having it. them here. Um, I had a meeting with Dave Pomerantz, the Central Services Director, about uh, our BMs, and so um, and that's in the process. I can't say that, you know, I've already put it in order. But um, in talking to him, I knew that the, the uh, caravan had gotten sold for $650, but I found out that the white van, our wheelchair accessible van, was sold for $1,200. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, um, $2,100. So uh, I have a letter going to the mayor to request that money be taken out of the general fund and provided to us and it'll go into the transportation. Do you foresee any problem with that? No, I already talked to the mayor about the 650, but I just found out yesterday mm -hmm. about the white van because okay. I said, oh, is that still in the parking garage? And he said, oh, no, that got sold. So oh, well. that was good news. Mm -hmm. So glad, glad of it. Yeah. Is there a good chance we'll be able to get two spots in the parking garage for two vans? Um, I, that I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know if we'll get back in the parking garage. So. Uh, I, I'm just going to stress this because I can tell the board, but also because it's being uh, filmed. We're really looking for um, a couple, we're always looking for volunteers, but we're looking for three specific volunteers for this. Uh, gardening we had um, somebody who did our gardening for us and when I say gardening it's you know taking care of the meditation garden and the flower beds around um, so we're looking for someone to do that and really that volunteer it's at their own time schedule and Jim you can't sign up to do it um, yes yeah. if somebody has a lot of this because you're doing too much already and you're yeah um, and so we have a lot of upcoming events that um, get put on our electronic bulletin board, but we're looking for someone who can do that and we can keep it uh, going um, on a weekly basis and everything gets updated um, more. So we're really looking for someone who has that skill. And then um, the Tuesday tea, which was started um, quarter of three to quarter four, we're looking for someone to facilitate that. Mm -hmm. Basically what that means is, you know, you're putting the tablecloths down, getting all the teacups out, and setting it up for the participants. How's that going? Um, some weeks there's like four people, then Teresa other weeks. Comes every week. Yeah. <coughs> then, yeah. We started out with a bang. I mean, were, the whole table was filled. Yeah. I think this last time was three, two. <laughs> Just the yeah. you know, and yeah. I so we hope it builds. I mean, just like I wonder, do you think? But it was such a nice day. It was the first really nice day. It was a nice afternoon. We're headed into weather yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if it's going to. I was surprised it was even the, the first time around a neighbor of mine. I thought <coughs> she would show up again, but she didn't. So what I'm saying is, it's really, really, I was surprised that when I came and I was on the gym came. There was one gentleman that was there. Well, that was T for two. Yeah. No, we actually had, team, we actually had four people. I was going to say one gentleman. We had five folks of us total. They came. People came in, had a class of tea, and then left. And then she and I stayed. And, and I know I've talked to half a dozen people since then. And some of the coffee people in the morning will be going. And Joey will be going. And Thomas will be going. And it's just a nice. It, it, some of the well, people who can't get up early in the morning to come to the coffee and conversation oh. are going to come to the tea thing because they can get up better and slower oh, yeah. and get around okay. later. So I expect it to really blossom. Yeah. And it's um, a drop-in. Nobody needs to sign up for it. It's, you know, if you're available, come on down and 
And there's um, tablecloths and everything. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fancy. Yeah. Oh, we are planning our annual volunteer recognition dinner, and it's going to be Wednesday, April 20th at 5.30 here at the Senior Center. Um, we're hiring South Myas to cater it. Um, and it's open for volunteers for the hours for 2015, and a volunteer has to have worked at least um, 25 hours. Um, the board will be invited, the volunteers will be invited, Heather and I are working on all the details to that particular um, program. So we try to do it every year, and um, it's just a nice way that we can thank our volunteers. It's nice. Um, so that's everything I have from the director's report because a lot of other things are listed on the agenda as individual items. So I can say more based on each one of those items. Okay, then we can move on to building and grounds report. Yeah, the only thing I had to report on that was that uh, the World War II Club for the Veterans Luncheon, they're still over here cooking. Uh, I guess their kitchen's taken a bit of time. Um, it's not really an issue having them here. It's nice that they have a place mm -hmm. in the neighborhood to it cook. So um, yes. <laughs> and they, you know, they take care of the kitchen, um, which we appreciate. So that's, and um, you know, again, with the gardens, and I will, I guess I will say too that there are a pair of hawks around here now. Mm -hmm. So there are not really pigeons on our cupola anymore. Okay. They're over at Walter Salvo now. So. <laughs> okay, it's seagulls at my house the other morning. That's not good oh, really. <laughs> so that's, that's all I have for um, building the grounds. Okay, then we can move on to old business and you can start. With yeah. So um, the sign out front, I'm going to pass this around. This is what the sign is going to look like. It's um, on two posts and it will have an LED message going up across so that we can put, you know, let's say it's the health and safety fair. Um, mm -hmm. So working with um, the building commissioner, Louis Hasbrook, who was down today, I showed him where it, we would like it to go and he's going to pursue it with um, zoning or planning or whoever else he needs to um, talk with about getting the sign to be erected. So um, Keith Brick is the sign maker and then the city electrician um, will be the one installing the electrical line from the sign into the, the building. And that sign is being paid through our gift account. And that money was already approved by the mayor and city council to be expended for our sign. So it'll be nice, and it can be controlled internally, meaning in, in the building um, with a laptop. You can put what you need on the, the screen. Um, the only other thing that I'm still checking on is that the city may be coming up with a new ordinance about lighting on signs um, because of the intensity. So I, I just have to find out if and when that might get changed um, because of the lighting. Any news on the sign for the rear of the building? Yeah, he's working on that. Yeah. Okay. And that, that sign goes on the building. Yeah. yeah. The lettering going through, um, the lighting will be red. Finally here. It's been a long time. It's getting there, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can go on to the fitness center. Yeah, so the fitness center, um, where it is now, is going to be moved, as you know, to the back room, larger space, and we have seven new pieces of equipment. The contracts were sent out um, this week, and um, once those contracts come back, and then they go through the process in the city of everyone who has to sign off on those, um, and then I will know from the uh, vendor who is um, Total Fitness, who is actually is the vendor who put in all the other equipment back in 2007, um, when the move will be made. Because they'll be moving all of the current equipment and all of the new equipment will get put in there. So that's gonna happen. <laughs> Soon. So, well, let's see, it's March. 
from? Maybe, yeah, I'm not even gonna say. So, whatever that means to anybody, it's so, but at least it's really in motion. Um, we had four different um, vendors who sent in a quote. Patty, um, so. a question about that. How are we going to make sure people come through to sign in and stuff instead of sneaking in the back door? Because somebody's told, come on in. Well, I, I think, I, is there yeah, some? that's a good question mm -hmm. um, and we have thought about it. Um, not only about if the fitness center is back there, but because other people try to do that as well. And mm. it, it, I, I'm going to say it just seems like there's somebody around at the right time when they're trying to open the door to let somebody in. And you know, we just say no. They go, you really should be going around to the front. So you know, we'll have to you see what happens. Yeah. 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 Um, and you know, one of my concerns was okay. Now it's not as visible. Now it's in the back. Um, in the um, break room we have a little peep hole I don't know that you know how you can look through it what do you call those um, so that we can look in there but you can only see directly on, in on front. the door on the door yeah. yeah and we have that put in there because of rental so that you could yeah. keep an eye on things but um, we're gonna have a phone in there with we'll have signs up that you know if something happens and dial this number um, but also you know the fitness assistants will be in there not all the time and you know, staff will be walking around as well. So we just have to be more um, vigilant. Do you, do you have signage on the doors not to let people? I mean, people I mean, both inside and outside. Inside to asking people who are inside not to open the keynote you know, directly. There are signs on the doors, and I'll say there's only been one group of people that were trying to let other people in. Gotcha. Okay. Is it it's locked from the outside? It's locked. Yeah, we, the so only you can't get in from the outside. Right. You're you're out it, somebody. Which yeah. people do, but you can't yeah. come in. And it's an exit only, but of course you can yeah. open it from the inside. Right, because sure. yeah. yeah. it's a second ingress. Could we consider uh, putting up signs about perfume for the fitness room at all? That have been brought up, but no. Not for our building or the fitness uh, center, but it can be please sense um, because it's yeah we can do that. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> yes. That's my initiation. Oh, oh, that's, that's my initiation. <laughs> that one special. Oh, there's no, there's no water. This was all nice. Yeah, we can put up signs asking people to refresh. Yeah, I work out there. It's a difficult thing. Maybe it's a bigger one. Pumping and pumping. Don't want to do it. Yeah, we can do that. So when the fitness center actually becomes a new entity, we'll do like a grand uh, reopening. Hmm. So um, there are five veterans, 14 seniors. Um, one senior has dropped out. Um, one person who applied didn't qualify because it was the rap, uh, wrong tax year that they wanted to use. And one uh, participant I never heard back from. I needed additional information from them and I never got it. So after trying to contact that person, um, I'm assuming they aren't interested anymore. But it's, you know, it's a very good program. Uh, you know, this is the third year of this program, um, and it's very beneficial to seniors and veterans, but it's also beneficial to the um, departments that the people work in. And we have um, participants here, and it's helpful to us. So um, it's, it's I, I hope the program continues in the, the future because it does benefit many people. Well, I think as this place knows, we work on volunteers and run on volunteers, so additional volunteers anyway are always good. Yeah, that's very true. I agree. Okay, the silent auction. Yeah. So that's still all business because um, the uh, Melissa Einberg is interested in helping with that but she doesn't want to coordinate it and you know we do have some items but I'm probably going to take this off of the agenda as old business 
because it isn't, it's really was something that was going to happen in October. And yeah, I, I won't be putting a lot of energy into that. I can just put together some information about what we already have. And if it gets pursued, then it gets pursued. Okay, the annual health and safety fair. Yeah, this is our 14th year. It's hard to realize that. Uh, May 12th from 10 to 2, it's one of the bigger events that we sponsor. Uh, it's here at the Senior Center. Um, the day before, we need people to help move furniture, and um, usually Bob and Harry and Bob put to the tables out and set up the great the tape on the floor, yes. Yeah. We're very good at that now. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to miss Harry next year, you know. So well, that, maybe you can still come back and do it. Well, yeah, see if you can get Harry to do commit for additional years. There you go. Because he'd be a retired person. They're even better at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we usually have about 67 exhibitors at it. It's just a very Free exciting and fun-filled mm -hmm. and informative day. Uh, we have a lot of people who come to that event. Um, I think, if anything, last year one of the problems was, and I, I'm going to say probably the only problem was parking. So yeah, we just need to figure out something more. Um, mm -hmm. The World War II Club lets us use their parking, but people only yeah. try to go on one side. We can use the other side, and the Daily Hampshire Gazette. So yeah. I think our publicity just needs to tell people more where they can go park. Mm -hmm. um, staff usually park off-site. And we probably should have our volunteers do that as well, like park over at World War II Club. Yeah. Because when you have a big program and you have all these people coming, you really need to have parking. Because I know some people drove around and they left. Um, yeah, valet park. Some of us to just put a vest on a valet parking. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. You know, at least at least put a volunteer out there when somebody pulls in. There's no that's place awesome. to say, yeah. here's where you need to go, or here's where you mm -hmm. need to go. Yeah. So there's. Yeah. When the vendors come, do they uh, they unload what they hear, and then do they then go and move their car far yes, away? Yeah, uh, and I do. usually have somebody out there to make sure that that's what they do. <laughs> so the, the vendors aren't parking here, right? right. Just to unload, right? Because as I say to them, you know, if you want yeah. people to come yeah. in here to talk to you and you can share your information, you need to move your car. Yes, yeah. if people don't have a place to park, okay. then they're not gonna be coming in. If, if we can volunteer for this. So do we just tell you, or do we just? Yeah, you can actually tell us. I've been calling you anyway. Or, or she be calling you. Uh, <laughs> they should call me. You. you don't have to call her. She will call you. One additional <laughs> benefit of the uh, health and safety fair uh, for those of us who live in Northampton is that many of the people exhibiting give out free bags, which are very useful now that we have the grocery bag right. ban on the small bag. Get carry bags, whatever. Good place to get bags. And all points <laughs> pens. And ballpoint pens. I got enough ballpoint pens for the year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. um, and so with the health and safety fair, we have all the vendors coming in, but the uh, coffee shop is open, we have the gift shop open, um, which you know is beneficial, and then Mary's Bistro is open as well for lunch. And um, so we look forward to all of that again. I think I already have I mean, just sent out the um, applications and I think you know in a week we have 10 vendors so I think that's that's good and we'll have a waiting list because that's what happens every year so it's, it's a very good event okay. uh, the last one under old business you Explain that. <laughs> oh yes. Um, so that actually that reserve for topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate we could discuss <laughs> goes under new business. So that if there's because you're supposed to post what you're talking about, yeah. but there are times when something comes up that you didn't anticipate it coming on. So that will appear on the uh, agenda in the future. It's really not anything new, but it's new to us on our agenda. Yeah. That's different than other. That's different than <laughs> other. <laughs> We've always had other, and other things have always been brought up. So. That's right. But now we're telling the public that you know there may be things that can come up. Right. Okay. Then we can move on to new business and we'll explain yep. the two of them you have on there. Sure. Side. So the board training. Um, 
April 14, 9.15 to 11.45, with registration at quarter of nine. This is with Emmett Schmarzo from the Department of Elder Affairs, Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Um, he usually comes here once a year to do it for training. So other councils on aging are invited to it as well. And um, if you're a new board member, it's really a great opportunity to learn a lot. And Emma is just such a wealth of knowledge and has great stories. Um, I think a lot of it's very interactive and it's going to be held right here at the Senior Center. We're always glad to host that for the um, Department of Elder Affairs. What time did that, excuse me? At um, 9.15 to quarter of 12. Is, do people need to pre-register? Yeah, um, I'll be sending out um, information. Well, actually, if you're interested in coming, you can just tell me and I'll put you okay. on the list. Yeah, okay. Because you wouldn't be on the Yeah, I mean, I've never gone to it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's good. Uh, it, he's really fun. He is a really uh, entertaining good. speaker. Good. Yeah. Lots of information, and it's very interesting. Good. You never fall asleep for his. Good. What I found was interesting was to talk to other people from other senior centers mm -hmm. that did the same thing we did and got some ideas and mm -hmm. shared some ideas right. and that was cool. Great. Um, and then uh, let's see, so the assistant director and director's position. Um, Heather's filling in now as the interim assistant director um, and some of the responsibilities of the assistant director um, have been passed around but Heather is the um, assistant director for all intents and purposes and I'd have to say that working with Heather it's been um, a good uh, collaboration she has a lot of great ideas and um, is very intent on making sure that things don't fall through the cracks and I will give the whole um, staff a lot of credit because everyone has just you know continued to work together and it, you know it's a really good team um, effort and you know it's, I, I'm very proud of the staff as an instructor and participant and everything else I haven't seen a bump and I expected that okay things are going to fall apart for a little bit anyway than they haven't mm -hmm. one you. of the things that we notice is that even having the lack of a body here there's a, a difference because it's it's not just the task that has to get done it's having somebody else to help you know move tables or chairs or to you know when you go out to the front you go out let's say to look at one of the participation notebooks and three people are at you at the same time and um, you know granted that that's why we're here but you really can tell the difference when somebody isn't here um, I just hired two new building monitors and those are the people we have in the building when there's a rental or there's a program going on and we need somebody at the front desk um, to you know, watch the building um, and that comes out of the rental fees that's how building monitors are paid but one of the positions that I haven't been able to fill is the handyman slash primary van driver. Um, that person takes care of all of our um, vehicles, which you know will have two vans, but also does the handyman out in the community at seniors' homes. I just haven't had anyone fill that position who applies that has the qualifications. Yeah. But you have to know some skill in how to do some handyman handy woman handy person so maybe that's how it should be addressed it's not a handy, 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 handy person um, and then um, in speaking with the mayor on Tuesday um, he is hoping to fill the position of director by July 1st so um, previously it was um, August but I'm glad to see that it would be July 1st I, I was concerned that there was going to be a lot of gaps in personnel here yeah. and then there's fewer people to do everything that needs to get done and then again Barbara Kaczynski is leaving as of August 1st. Any uh, information on the letter we sent regarding board members? I, I haven't heard anything. I don't, I don't know anything about the search committee or mm -hmm. how the mayor is doing that. Hmm. So on, on this board Jim and Jerry and both had um, offered to be on that committee. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know anything more than that. Okay, that's a new business. Kathy, do you have anything to say about how? Uh, Valley, no, I mean, basically, if the, a lot of the um, discussion, um, you know, they're streamlining their uh, meetings. You know, 
but rather than go through all the details for each individual committee, if, if people get them, the board members get them beforehand, and then people can ask questions from that. Um, the only thing is, like, they're really stressing looking out and raising money. So that's something that, you know, and every board member has to be on at least one committee, another committee, and, um, but the, the, you know, they had, I had to leave, but they had a little uh, part of the meeting set aside to kind of brainstorm ways to bring in more money. And so now there's that, only one representative. One representative from Northampton. Right. I mean, they, there's no longer three right. slots. It's only right. one. Yeah, and they've been taking people at large. A lot of people at large. In fact, there's there's a, um, a lawyer who um, specializes in elder law who's on it. Who's a Northampton person? Mm -hmm. Spencer uh, Gazy. And uh, I think who else? And then someone no, she's from half. But yeah, so it's it's really has changed. <laughs> Well, yeah. I'll just mention that Kathy has retired from my really? paying job. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> I love it. Now you're Thirty-nine adult. years. Oh, oh you're so overdue. Well, you volunteer for everything. I know. I, was, I mean, in fact, I was like, oh, "Call Heather. I can look good." <laughs> Heather, <laughs> Heather, get her contact information. Yeah. Oh, you got to look good. good. You need you to learn how to work the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'd be willing to kind of pitch in, you know, because I am doing different other little things, but you know, like to sit. At the, I mean, or do the desk or you know, well, just, just like coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So just pitch in, you know, for absences and stuff. Awesome. Mike, is any is any uh, indication you'll be busy? Okay, you see the all the announcements there, and uh, I want to have a motion to adjourn. Can I just say something? Oh, mm -hmm. um, so the corn beef and cabbage dinner, we still have tickets available. It's really a fun, exciting event. You could come and bring four or five friends with you. Um, and I want to say, thank Lorraine because she had um, our flyers put out on the table at the um, St. Patrick's Association um, mm -hmm. dinner. Uh, so, and I and they will be at the church function this weekend also. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 So, um, and then if you can just where it says remember the May meeting is, if you can mm -hmm. cross out Thursday May 5th, you may have already done this, and put it Wednesday May 4th, so that if you yeah. look at it. Two weeks from now, it'll be correct. <laughs> and did you be, have um, Wendy's number? Uh, yeah. Five eight seven. Five eight seven one two two four two one two. Uh, well, that the, the answer is no. You know, Barbara. <laughs> I get it. When we Stop go back, talking. I have the phone index. I don't think I have it with me. Phone number. Wendy's number is 587-1064. You were close. Oh, Patty, and we now up to 14 members in the board. Yeah, so there's one vacancy. Motion to adjourn. Please. I'll make the first motion. Second. Right. Kathy? Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.